close your eyes for a minute. Nothing bad is going to happen, no loud bangs. I assure you, harm will stay on his seat. <laughs> well, when you close your eyes, I would like you to think of your favorite holiday picture. Maybe it was from this year, maybe from a couple of years back. Or just make one up in your mind. Just a stereotypical sight of white beaches or white mountains, stuff like that. When you've opened your eyes, I would like you to take a look at the picture which characterized our holiday in 2011. It's not quite what you expect. It looks like there's a storm coming, and there's only one woman on the picture. This photo was taken on the 8th of July 2011. We had a pretty good day so far, and nothing strange had happened. But right before dinner, my mother suddenly had some great difficulty in talking. At first, well, we didn't know what it was, and we, yeah, we could have a laugh about it. But later, she couldn't talk at all. When the medics came, she turned out she saw with the up, and part of her brain had temporarily been cut off blood, which caused that part of her brain to die for a little while. I picked my sister up from work, and we watched how she was taken off to the hospital on shore by helicopter, where she stayed for a week. But in a few days, things got better. So my sister and I, we thought, well, this is our final evening together. So we, we went to celebrate it at the restaurant we worked at. But right that evening, we received a phone call from the hospital that she had suffered a stroke, and part of her, ba part of her brain had, had died. We got on the boat the following morning, back because we were on uh, Finland, and we got on our way back to the hospital, where we stayed for a week to see her recover very slowly. After half a year, she fully recovered, and now she can, fortunately, laugh with us about certain confusions of time she made. For I'm a musician and composer, Music has always been a good cure and diversion in which I can display my emotions. This has always been so and isn't likely to change. So, right after the incident, I started to come up with uh, melodic lines or harmonies, titles, instrumentations and so on, in order to write a piece for her someday. During the months of her recovery, I continued to think of a way to translate this tragedy into a piece of music that it would not only help me, but it also had to be a piece my mother could relate to and thoroughly enjoy. Um, I came to the realization I had to write a piece for flute solo, for the one and only reason she plays the flute herself. When I continued to think, I also thought of the form of the eventual piece, and the form can be characterized by one simple question, what does a stroke sound like? So, what does a stroke sound like? Lyrical melodic lines cut off by percussive effects caused by the player's feet, perhaps, or fast and swift runs, which gradually fade away, after which silence follows, in which the player starts to whistle in and tap on his flutes. When I thought of how to translate a medical term into music, I came to the realization it wouldn't be enough just to let the player blow its flute in a good old-fashioned way. Now I needed more, so I started to do research on so-called extended techniques. These are techniques that um, exceed the playing technique of any instrument, and in this case the flutes. By means of several books, and musical scores of pieces which use these techniques, I found out more of the possibilities of the modern flutes. I'll demonstrate a few of these techniques with uh, Petra, who will perform the piece in uh, five minutes or so. Um, well, the first technique I'd like to show you is, um, well, on string instruments, like the violin or the cello, you can play a pizzicato by plucking the string instead of striking it with the bow. Well, you can play pizzicato on the flute, but I think it would look rather weird if you would try it on a string instrument because it's a tongue pizzicato. And this percussive effect is caused by slamming the tongue against the mouthpiece of the flute. Well, it sounds like that. A second technique which I used is the multiphonic, which is the art of playing two notes at the same time. And this may sound very easy because, for example, on a piano or a guitar, you can just <laughs> use two fingers instead of one, and you have two notes at the same time. But the flute, because it's a melodical instrument, it usually only plays one note at the same time. So playing two notes or more, which is also possible, is rather difficult and not that easy as it sounds. Well, now I have the information I need in order to start working. The eventual form of the piece has become a time-lapse of a stroke, starting before the incident and ending during recovery. 
the piece can be cut in two parts. In the first part, nothing is wrong, and the blood flows through the body and brain without taking any casualties. Later, tension builds, uh, later, tension builds, and one harsh note followed by silence roughly cuts an end to the first part and introduces the second. In the second part, we reside in the part of the brain that has been cut off blood. A small fragments that are sometimes repeated, we can, we can very slowly hear the brain recover. This recovery is also illustrated in the end of the piece. In the end, I used the motive from the very beginning to illustrate the recovery. This motive is stretched out, but cut off by piercing notes, which illustrate that things are better, but the end is better to come. CVA is the medical term of the stroke, and also the title of this piece, which will be performed by Peter van der Dorde. Today's performance will be quite special because there will be a dance involved, which will be performed by Gül Henkens and Margot Zeus Lassus. So, what does a stroke sound like? Listen for yourself. Thank you very much.